Now in the last couple of videos what we've looked at is working with the wave equation, so working with writing something of the form p cos x plus q sin x in one of the four wave variation forms, so k sin of x plus alpha, k sin of x minus alpha, k cos x plus alpha, k cos x minus alpha. What we're going to look at in this video is how we can then use this to actually help us when we're solving trig equations using waves. So that's when we're solving a trig equation that is a combination of a sine and a cos, where we have to eliminate it and somehow get it down to be one trig function so that we can solve it. So the easiest way to do this is actually demonstrating it with examples. So let's imagine we do an example that says solve 5 cos x plus sine x equals 2, where x is somewhere between 0 and 360 degrees. Now one like this, you can look at that and try as you might, there's no easy way to solve that when you've got a combination of cos and sine. Your first step has to be to put it in one of the four wave function forms. Now, it doesn't specifically ask you to do it. So what this means is that any of the forms will be fine because they should all give you the same ultimate final answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it in the form k cos x minus alpha. I'm going to use that form to do it. Now I know k cos x minus alpha can be expanded to k cos alpha cos x plus k sine alpha sine x. The bonus of doing this form here is that it's something positive plus something positive, which is what we've got here. It'll eliminate any negatives being part of the equation and maybe causing any fuss or any confusion when we're working it through. Now when we've done that, we equate the both parts, so we equate it to 5 cos x plus sin x to start with. Again, look at the coefficients here, k cos alpha, k sin alpha, and the two coefficients of your parts here. What I'm then able to say is that k cos alpha is equal to 5, and k sin alpha is equal to 1. Using the two of those, I'm able to say that tan alpha, which is k sin alpha over k, over k cos alpha, equals one fifth, one over five. Now with this one here, again, use our cast diagram. And what we're able to look at is f seeing which of the four quadrants we're looking at. So our cos function here is positive, so we know those two. Sine is positive, those two, and tan is positive, that one and that one. Lo and behold, we're in this section again. So I know that if I solve alpha equals tan minus one, of a fifth, so 0 0.2, what I'll end up getting is my correct answer that I want for the angle I'm after, which in this case will give me 11.3 degrees to one decimal place. What I now need to get for this function as well is the k. Well, we know that k is given by the square root of the p squared plus q squared when we think back to the general form, which is the coefficients here. So in this case, it's the square root of 5 squared plus 1 squared, so I know that k equals the square root of 26 once we've done both of those. So I've done both of those, I've got my k, I've got my alpha, it's time to combine them. So I can say fine, so 5 cos x plus sine x equals, well we're going to put it in the k cos x minus alpha form, k is root 26, so it's square root of 26 cos of x minus alpha, so x minus 11.3. So what I've done is I've taken one that's a combination of two trig functions and I've made it a singular trigonometric function. So now I can rewrite the entire equation or the original equation I had as root 26 cos of x minus 11.3 and that equals 2. Now this we should be able to solve. Divide through by the root 26 and I get cos of x minus 11.3 equals 2 over root 26. Take cos minus 1 on both sides there, and I get x minus 11.3 equals cos minus 1 of the 2 over root 26, which is 66.9 degrees. However, what I know is that I've all, I'm going to get two answers. I'm after a cos function, so I've got CAST, again looking at the cast diagram, and it's a positive value. So I know I'm going to get two solutions, one in here, one in here. And I know to get the solution here, I do 360 degrees. Take away. 
the solution I had. So in this case, take away the 66.9 degrees. So what I know is that x minus 11.3 is going to equal the 66.9 degrees, or the 360 take away 66.9, 293.1 degrees, and then to solve it, add 11.3 on. So I know in this case I'm going to x equal to 78.2 degrees, or 304.4 degrees. So I get two solutions there for that trig equation. So rewriting it allows me to solve it. And if I'd rewritten it in any of the other forms as well, I'd have got those same answers. All that would have varied is the values within here. My value of k would have stayed the same because of the coefficients here. All that would have varied if I'd gone to cos of x plus, sine of x plus or sine of x minus is what was in here. And this is the same when we start to also bring in double angle formula with it. So if I up the ante just a little bit and do 2 cos 2x plus 3 sine 2x equals 1, the same sort of thing applies. We've got it written there in terms of a combination of a sine and a cosine function. So our first step to being able to solve anything like that is we have to get rid of that combination. We have to write it as a singular function and then work it through. The only difference being in this case, what I'm going to rewrite this one as is in the form k cos of 2x minus alpha. Because it's a 2x here and a 2x here, keep it as 2x in there. So it's going to be k cos alpha cos 2x plus k sine alpha sine 2x. And I know that I'm looking to rewrite my function in that form. So 2 cos 2x plus 3 sine 2x. I want to rewrite it in that form. Equate the coefficients and do those together. So I know k cos alpha is equal to 2. I know what my k sine alpha is by looking at that. So in this case, I know k sine alpha equals 3. And use the pair of them to get tan alpha. So tan alpha is sine over cos. It's 3 over 2. Cast diagram tells me which one I'm looking at. By this point, we should start to recognise things now. All three are positive. So what I'm going to get is a cast diagram looks like that. So again, it's going to fall in the A section. So I know I'm going to just do alpha equals tan minus 1 of 3 over 2 to get my answer. In this case, I get alpha equal to 0 0.983. Because remember, we're working in radians in this question. Look at the start. X is between 0 and 2 pi. So 0 0.983 radians. The next thing I do is again I look for my k. And again, its formula doesn't change either. It's still p squared plus q squared, which we get from looking at the coefficients here. So it's the square root this time of 2 squared plus 3 squared. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. Add them together and you get square root of 13. So now I've got the k value. I've got my alpha, I can substitute them in and turn it into the form I want. So I could say, fine, 2 cos of 2x plus 3 sine 2x equals my k. So root 13 cos, remember it's 2x, it's not x, cos of 2x minus my alpha minus 0 0.983. So we've taken the function which had two trig functions and a combination of both. We've written it as one. We can now solve it. It makes it easier for us to do. So we can rewrite the equation as root 13 cos of 2x minus 0 0.983. And I know that equals 1. Now, this is where the trick comes into play because it's 2x we're looking at. We want the solutions for x between 0 and 2 pi. But I've got a 2x here, so I have to adjust the limits ever so slightly to help me when I'm solving it and look for solutions between 0 for 2x and 4 pi. Because what will happen if I find my solutions in this interval here and then scale them down by halving them, I'll take all of my solutions and put them back in the 0 to 2 pi range. Remember, what this does to the graph is it puts two periods, two repetitions between 0 and 2 pi. So I'm going to get double the amount of answers. So to counteract that, I extend my limits and then bring them back down. But solving it isn't any different. Divide by the root 13, and I get cos of 2x minus 0 
equals 1 over root 13. And I take cos minus 1 on both sides to get my solution. So what I'm able to say then is that 2x minus 0 0.983 equals cos minus 1 of the 1 over root 3, which is equal to 1.290. And that's the three decimal places for that. But remember, I've got four possible solutions. If we think of the curve between 0 and 4 pi, my cos curve repeats four times repeats twice and it has four answers so imagine there's our solution there so there's the first one the one that we found to get that one there think back to the cast diagram it will fall on this quadrant here which is 360 take away or in this case because it's radians 2 pi take away the 1.290 and then to get these two here all I have to do is add 360 degrees or in this case with radians 2 pi onto both of my previous solutions so I then do 2 pi plus the 1.290. And then I do this solution here added onto 2 pi. So I'll do 2 pi plus the second one here, which is my 2 pi minus 1.290. Find the four solutions there. And what I end up getting is that 2x minus 0 0.983 equals 1.290 for my first solution. My second solution is 4.993. My third solution is 7.573. And my fourth solution is given by 11.276. And then to get the final bits now, I simply add on my 0 0.983 to each of these solutions and then half them. So if I add on 0 0.983, I get 2x equals 2.273, and 12.259. Then to get my final answer, half each of those, and what that does is it scales the function down into a 0 to 2 pi barrier. I get 1.137. 2.988, 4.278, and 6.130. That gives me the four solutions I'm after within that boundary there between 0 and 2 pi for that function. It's the same steps every single time though for solving these ones where it's a combination of two trig functions, get it back into one form, get it back into a sign or a cause using the four expansions. Once we've done that, they're straightforward to solve. Think back to when we solved trig functions back at National 5 and earlier on in the course.